Good day, statisticians. I don't know if you just watched it or not, but we just considered an example of um, looking at the combinations of random variables that involved a difference, right? So over here, we were trying to figure out the probability that a randomly selected banana would be bigger than an apple. And so we started off by thinking um, that, that if a banana, right, is greater than an apple, then that would be the same thing as thinking that the difference, if I was to subtra subtract banana minus apple, that that would be some number that's greater than zero. And, uh, and this, of course, led us to think about ultimately this, the distribution of, of this, the difference between these two random variables. What if you had two independent random variables and you just made an observation of one, made an observation of other, and, and subtracted those two random values? What would be the distribution of the results? And, and so we considered that um, in our last video. We ended up seeing that so long as these two variables were both normally distributed, that their difference would be also normally distributed. Um, and that uh, you could subtract the expected values to get the mean of this distribution. But that interestingly enough, this is what was kind of interesting, that if we wanted to know the variance of B minus A, instead of subtracting their respective variances, we would still add them. Even when we're subtracting two variables, to get the, the, the variance of the difference of those variables, we're still going to add the separate variances um, from each of the individual variables. All right, so the real question was why, right? But a lot of folks, they see this for the first time and they're, they're just wondering, well, why the heck do you still add the variances even when you subtract the variables? I'm gonna try to make that intuitive for you right now as best as I can in this video. So, so let's start off with thinking about just a completely separate data set. Let's just call this data set Y. Why? Because, <laughs> why not? <laughs> All right, so let's say Y consisted of just the numbers, um, say 10, 20, and 30, right? And, um, and you might wonder like, okay, how spread out are these numbers? Well, they have a range of 20 altogether. Each of the numbers are 10 apart, right? So that's kind of nice. But let me also then consider, say, the, the, the set negative Y, right? Negative Y. Well, what would the set negative Y consist of? Well, negative Y would basically be the same thing as Y, except each of the numbers would now be what? Negative, right? Let's just put a negative inside of all of them. And then you might wonder, which of these two sets, say, is more spread out? Which of them has more variation between them? Fair question. Neither, right? Both of these are equally spread. Both of them have a range of 20. Um, if, we, if these were samples, then the sample standard deviation of both of these would end up being exactly 10, right? So in fact, if we just look at a variable and then the, the opposite of that variable, just by multiplying every single value by negative one, we'll end up having two distributions that have really exactly the same spread, right? So that um, we, one might say, right, that the, 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 the variance, whatever the variance is of y, it'll end up being exactly the same as whatever the variance is of um, negative y, right? They're gonna end up having precisely the same variance overall. Oh, well. How does that lead me to this formula? Maybe you see it, maybe you don't. Let's think about this then. So if I was to just say the variance of x minus y, right, then I know from previous result that that, that mean, that, that's the same thing as the, as the sum, the variance of x plus, now plus what? What do you mean plus? I've got a minus sign here. Ah, well, wouldn't that just be the variance of negative y? When you, when you subtract two numbers, isn't it the same thing as adding the opposite, right? Aha, so if I write this first, the variance, uh, variance of x minus y is, is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of negative y. Well, what did we just get right here? The variance of negative y, right? We show the variance of negative y is the same thing as the variance of y. So I can simply substitute in here in place of the variance of negative y, I can write the variance of y. And so what is our result? the variance of x minus y is still going to be the sum of the variance of x plus the variance of y. Because the variance of negative y and the variance of y is exactly the same. So hence, that's our formula. That's what justifies uh, what we did in our previous example. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, and uh, I hope you're enjoying statistics. These formulas right here I, I, are so crucial to all the things that we'll justify later in our course, especially when we get into all the distributions we need to do to figure out tests of significance and confidence intervals and all kinds of stuff. So I hope you understand this. Please let me know if you have any questions. Have a beautiful day. I'll catch you on the flip side.